Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome to the first of the newest season series of webinars and motivational interviews. And to kick things off, I have uh, Nigel Batten in the house. Hi. How you doing, Nigel? Yeah, good, thanks, George. Thanks for having me on. No, no, fine. And uh, just to kind of put some, uh, some, some context into this as well, this is our third attempt at doing this webinar because the first <laughs> two the Facebook Live didn't go down as planned. And I ended up putting all sorts of special effects on around my head, um, but actually couldn't bring you into the webinar. So here we are doing it as a Zoom record, but just really, really pleased to have this opportunity to talk to you. Um, because, you know, you've got a pretty epic challenge coming up in 2020, haven't you? What, what, tell us what you're planning on doing. Yeah. Next year. Um, so next year, so around September, back end of September, um, I'm going to be swimming all the way around the Isle of Wight. Um, so it's a, a total distance of about, about, I say about because of the tides and everything, Yeah. Uh, 65 miles. Um, so I think the equivalent is swimming across the channel and back three times. So Seriously? The, yeah, is that the, Yeah, the Dover wow. Calais crossing is 21 miles, um, as far as I'm aware. Wow. Um, so it's, it's essentially doing that three times wow. over. So tell, tell us a bit about kind of the, the plans for this. I want, I want to kind of dig into some of the, the, the training approaches and sort of the mindset of it as well before we get into the, you know, the big, yeah. powerful driving force behind the decision to do this. But kind of logistically, how is it going to work? What's the plan? So the plan at the moment, um, so I'm, I'm not a trained swimmer, so I'll throw that one out there first. <laughs> um, I've, I've always been, I've, I've been okay. I suppose as a, as, as a non-trained swimmer and I've always been comfortable in the water. Um, so for the moment, for the first sort of month or so, um, it's, it's getting used to swimming again, um, getting my strokes sorted, getting my, get my technique down um, and just getting some pool? time in the water. At the moment, yeah, in, in the pool. pool. In the pool, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm looking to go open water um, from around April time when the water starts warming up slightly. Um, and at that point I'll be, training with some uh, open water swimming groups um, and look from real distance onto, uh, onto my swims. Um, so at the moment, I just completed my first hour non-stop. Yeah. Um, which, was, which was good. I was really happy with that, actually. Um, so Yeah, I've seen some of your times. I mean, even you haven't been going at it for that long, really, with your training and your times were already coming down quite, quite a lot. Um, does it feel like you're sort of pushing I mean, yourself harder yeah. at the moment or...? Just getting I don't eaten. know what it is. It just it just seems so comfortable, and the, the more I've relaxed into swimming, actually, it's turned out the faster I'm swimming and going yeah. through the water. So you know, um, maybe there's there's something in that. So yeah. I think once I get some proper coaching, um, then yeah, then then hopefully those times will come down even more, um, and I can actually yeah. start picking up some proper speed. So the actual event itself, that when you go for this challenge in September October time next year. Um, will you be doing it in one go? Will you be doing it in stints? Like, what sort of support? How do you take on nutrition? I've got so many questions and we've yeah, got like 20 minutes. Like, just, just the the ego in me saying, yes, I'm going to do it all in one stint and I'm going to nail it. And uh, say so the, the record for the swimming around the, the Isle of Wight is 26 hours, which is, okay. I say, it's, as much as it sounds like a long time, actually for 65 miles of swimming, that's quick. such a quick time. Um, so I'm I'm not looking to go and break the record, um, <laughs> but at the same time I'm going to allow myself to have have some rest because uh, so at the end of the day I, I want to get back home to uh, to my boy and mm. my wife and and just be able to get round. So yeah, there, there may be sort of holding on to the boat for a bit and yeah, grabbing okay. some uh, some nutrition along the way. So you've got your own sort of standards, the way that you're going to do it. Uh, but you're you're going to get around from point A right around the aisle back to point A again. You'll have yeah. the boat support. If you need to take a break, you can do. If you need to take on nutrition, you can do. Um, but you're going to be swimming every one of those uh, miles between Absolutely, start yeah. and finish. And like you said, the tide is something. I mean, I've done open water swimming, um, but I've never had to. I've never had to deal with kind of tidal waters and currents before. So, how much can that affect you? How much can it change the distance that you swim? It can it can make a huge difference. If I get the tides wrong, I can end up sticking extra miles onto that that, that journey. Yeah. Although the, the the distance on the map would be the same, and at points I could be swimming backwards essentially. Um, so if I get those tides right. wrong and my my pace isn't up there, um, then yeah, I, I could 
essentially not be moving in the water, moving very slowly or even moving backwards. So uh, How frustrating would that be? The tides around the Isle of Wight are, are pretty strong. So, um, okay. so yeah, it's really important we get that the starting time um, and an estimated finishing time. Yeah, um, I suppose once, you, once you've got the start time, you estimate how fast you're going to be going, then you know yeah. what schedule you've got to stick to as well, which is sort of quite yeah. motivating to, to keep that pace continuous. Yeah, absolutely. And um, so thankfully, I've, I've got, I say my wife, Kiara, she's, she's amazing and she has accomplished so much. And I'm, I'm kind of lucky that actually she, she's a, a qualified yachts master. So, uh, ah. so I've got, got someone to follow me around on the, on the boat, on the support crew straight Brilliant. away. So. Brilliant. So, I, you know, I think it's like any of these challenges, the more you get into it um, and the more you decide, you know, this is what obviously you've decided a long time ago, this is what you're going to do. Um, the more you start learning about it and the more you get into the details and the more immersed you get in the challenge. Have you, I know you said you, you haven't really been you know, a trained swimmer in the past, but you're quite comfortable in the water. Have you done anything at all, even close to this before? No, nothing <laughs> whatsoever. Um, you know, I, I was always sort of like a, a water baby growing mm. up and I like being in the pool. I'm happy scuba diving. I'm happy just around the water in general. Um, did uh, I did twelve years in the Air Force? Um, so we have a swimming test that we that we have to pass. Um, but in comparison to what this is, it's nothing, nothing yeah. in, in comparison. At so, all. so what? You know, you've you've got some sort of background. Uh, I know you're a trainer and a coach now. You've you've yes. had some time in the Air Force. Uh, so you've you've done and are doing all of these things. Um, so kind of there's obviously quite a, a strong in a belief that you have that, well, this is the goal and I'm going to do it. Have there been, you know, did it take you a while for it to really sink in that you were going to do this or was it just like woke up one morning and decided that's the goal. That's what I'm going to do. It's, um, I say the, the thing that's pushing me along, um, it's, it's essentially, it's my little boy Ruben. Um, mm -hmm. and uh, say, so I know you've seen the, uh, seen the post on Facebook. Um, yeah. But, tell, tell us, tell us a bit more about that. Cause I mean, this, this so, is yeah. such an incredible story of, uh, of sort of courage and determination and, you know, um, a, a triumph of life. Uh, and I know this is something that's obviously massively driving you. So tell us a bit about, about where, where, where this idea came from. So back on the 8th of September, um, my son Ruben was, he was born uh, 13 weeks premature. Yeah. Um, and the the entire process, I mean, the pregnancy was a complicated pregnancy anyway, um, much to the point where sort of the doctors now are, are writing about it because the rarity of the pregnancy and, and how it all came about wow. um, not been documented before. Um, so my, my wife, uh, she had a heterotopic pregnancy, um, which was uh, an ectopic pregnancy in a fallopian tube and a C-section um, implantation. Oh. So um, baby Ruben decided to uh, nestle down in Kiara's uh, C-section scar, um, which actually made it a very complicated pregnancy on its own. Right. Um, sometimes the C-section implantation can happen um, with IVF treatment or can just happen um, sort of naturally. Mm -hmm. um obviously Kiara's happened naturally and um <laughs> the placenta grew in a way that actually put a huge risk to uh to Kiara's life and on the 8th of September she was rushed in uh for an emergency cesarean section wow. um and the staff at Prince Edward Anne um hospital in Southampton um I really cannot thank them enough um and they essentially saved my wife's life um yeah. and Reuben's life um in what ends out to be um a five and a half hour surgery um she received um she lost seven and a half liters of blood um, and the average human being has about five liters five to six maybe um of, <laughs> of blood so she's essentially lost almost one and a half people's wow. worth of uh, <laughs> worth of blood um again the the medical team were absolutely amazing the support from the hospital was was phenomenal um and baby reuben i saw him after about sort of 40 minutes before he's whisked off to uh to the neonatal unit and from there it's another 
five hour wait to see my wife and she whisked off to uh, to intensive care uh-huh. straight after that um and again the the entire journey that Ruben, my wife um, myself have been through um yeah it's, it's taken its toll but the whole way through this that the hospital have been there supporting us they've been mm-hmm. absolutely amazing and this swim essentially is my way of saying thank you and i want to raise some money and and to say thank you as best as i can essentially um i don't think you can ever truly sort of repay something where they where someone's saved the lives of two people in your family um especially when they're so immediate and and you know it means so much to you um but so this is my motivation for getting around yeah. the aisle. I, I thought of things I could do, and I thought I even thought about cross channel swim, marathons, you know, mm-hmm. um, running events. And I was like, it means so much to me that actually I'm, I want to do something that really hasn't been done much before. Um, yeah. And I say I'm, I'm from Southampton, and the Isle of Wight is is right <laughs> you know, yeah. it, it's a, a 20 minute ferry journey, you know, and uh, uh-huh. I was like, okay, what what's it going to take to get around there? Um, and something in me just said, do you know what? Go for it. Go do it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's going to be a hell of a journey getting there. But you did know. did you like do a lot of research into what that challenge was going to take physically before you kind of had this gut feel that I'm going to do this, whatever it takes? Or did you just uh, kind of find yourself looking at it, thinking, what am I going to do to? So celebrate it this was, amazing yeah it was it was a combination of the two really i sort of like i was like okay that's that sounds crazy it sounds crazy yeah. enough but it sounds doable yeah yeah um yeah, yeah. Uh, particularly after uh, there was a chap ross edgley who swam all the way around the uk yes. yeah um i was like okay if someone can swim all the way around the uk it's i can possible. make it around the isle of wight how many people so, have done <laughs> the round isle of wight swim then they ha- there's only four people that have gone really? all the way round um as okay. a solo and uh, so the record is uh 26 hours um so at the pace that i'm i'm swimming at, at the moment i'm looking sort of about 38 hours uh-huh. um so yeah the pace has got to pick up a bit um <laughs> so but yeah. you know it's it's doable um you know, i know that it's physically been done before um so that that gives me some assurance and and also the, the fact that Actually, my swimming time has come down so much in in that first month. Um, yeah, you know, with, with each session, I'm feeling a little bit more confident. I can I can do it, and if I push myself, get all the way around. So, so how, you know, I guess it's early days now, and you've only just got to the point where you're swimming for an hour. But have there been, or do you envisage there being, sort of challenges up ahead? Where? Oh, uh, absolutely. There, there's going to be days where it's a motivation factor. Mm-hmm. Um, you know the, the whole process that that we've been through um it's it, it's pushed us all sort of mentally as mm. well as sort of physically just with the with doing and going to hospital um uh myself uh <laughs> i've been diagnosed with some some pts symptoms um oh. since the event and i'm managing it you know yeah. um and i'm getting support with that from from again from the hospital who have been fantastic um but it's one of those things that I think people sort of don't talk about, um, mm-hmm. and there is a lot of talking about mental health and everything that's yeah. with it, I mean, particularly on social media. So you know, the more it's being normalised, I think, I think uh, mm-hmm. the better it is. Um, so I've, I've, you know, a couple of PTSD symptoms that I'm I'm sort of managing and dealing with. But again, I've got fantastic support behind me. Yeah. Um, I've gone massively off on a tangent and forgot where I was going with yeah, this. But... This is good. I mean, it's kind of interesting, interesting as well, because obviously yeah. this has been very physically and presumably kind of emotionally and mentally yeah. uh, traumatic for Kiara. And also, you know, well, Ruben's probably come into the world and he's been, he's been through the uh, you know, intensive care and uh, neonatal unit. And, he, he, you know, he's not going to have any recollection of this when he gets older. No, but uh, but there's kind of the impact that's had on you as well, which I guess I never really kind of considered that, um, and and probably few people would do. Um, but it was something that you recognised in yourself. Then was it that uh, you know you were that kind of your thinking was 
was yeah, off it's... or you're kind of struggling with things my my ability to sort of like manage stress and things like that it sort of <laughs> Taka someone at the door <laughs> Taka hey Taka come here Taka Taka come here come here come here come here, come here. <laughs> squirrel or something in the garden there <laughs> so only when you're recording <laughs> yeah, yeah good job this isn't live <laughs> I won't edit this without. <laughs> Good. So, go ahead. so you, were, kind of, you were saying that kind of after after it happened and, and you started kind of yeah um, I sort of found myself I was getting flashbacks to not so much the actual event I think mean, my, my big thing was seeing Kiara post surgery mm. um, right. and I found myself getting flashbacks to that moment um, which I realized I knew they weren't you know um, that that wasn't where I was, you know, yeah. um, as much as I felt like, like I was there, I realized quite quickly, okay, something's not right here. I'm getting, getting this happen. I went and spoke within and then probably about a week. I went to, uh, went to the, uh, the doctors at the hospital. Yeah. So, but this is happening. Um, I'm not managing my stress very well. I'm, you know, agitated. Think, things, something's not right. So I, I sat yeah. down spoke with them and the support they've given me been absolutely brilliant. Yeah. So, um, yeah. You know, there's, there's something that I'll continually manage, you know, the, the trauma of the event, you know, it's happened and I can't change that. But it's, mm -hmm. it's something I'm very work, very much working to, uh, to correct and, yeah. and, and deal with, essentially. So. Yeah, well, I think yeah, that in itself, Nigel, is a really positive uh, kind of message of strength as well. To, you know, for it to happen, for you, for you to kind of just get a, get a grip on that so quickly, to realise that, you know, hang on, this isn't, this isn't right. But rather than just to put up with it to kind of man up and get on with it because, you know, other people have had it so much harder and, you know, your, your, your baby's just getting on with it and Kiara's just getting on with it. You should be able to get on with it. You can see how easy it would be to tell yourself stories like that um, and, and then not Massive. go and get the help that you can so, <laughs> so easily <laughs> available and accessible um, yeah. that, to make sure that you are there to support those other important people in your life in the best possible way. So that's a really strong message as well that uh, something i hadn't kind of come into this interview thinking that we were gonna we were gonna get so thanks for sharing that as well yeah as i say the more i can normalize it, i think the the more it, easier it is for me to manage as well so mm -hmm. i think that in itself should if anyone is struggling they should just talk about it whether it's with mm -hmm. with a mate down the pub or you know a, a close friend or if you need to go and talk to a professional you know yeah the, the more you can sort of normalize what's going on and feel that you are able to talk about yeah. it. I mean, yeah. it, there used to be a stigma as people with mental health issues, you know, if mm -hmm. you start talking to them about it, they're going to fall apart right in front of you, but it's, yeah. it's, it's not the case. Um, yeah. it's, like we're talking yeah. <laughs> pretty normally well, now. It's, so it's we're, you know, it's like this, I think that are so important. It's, it's the whole yeah. time to talk. We need to talk that, that, that they're kind of really strong messages, but it's the real yeah. life stories like this of, you know, people like you who have gone off and get, gotten kind of the help you needed with it, like, you know, they use the analogy uh, or it's, the analogy is often used, should I say, of, you know, you, you, you break your arm, you go to the doctor's, oh, I've got a broken arm. Okay, right, well, let's patch you up. Um, yeah. And you get sorted out and then you haven't got a broken arm anymore and you're fixed. Um, and, and, and this is the more stories that there are out there, as you said, it kind of normalizes it and says, well, look, this is, this is, this is just what you need to do. It's no big deal. You just yeah. and you, you, you take the, you get the help that you need when you're struggling like this. So, so that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, look, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Normalizing it, getting mm -hmm. treatment for it. And you know, okay, I've, I've done well in that. I've, I've not needed medication for, for it. Some people need it, you know, yeah. don't be, don't be ashamed by that or, or scared by that. You know, yeah. I, I think if, you can look after yourself um then brilliant if you need help and um, to get yourself better then you absolutely have to do it um so from, from where i am i've got to be there for for yara i've got to be there for ruben you know we, we've got mm. three other boys between us so it's wow, you know yeah. it's a busy house i've got a lot of people to be there <laughs> so if i'm not good then you know the rest of the family is not good so i i have to go and get things yeah. sorted yeah yeah Fantastic. And, and Kiara and Ruben now kind of all on the mend so and good. getting healthy. 
They're all, all, yeah, all, uh, so good. Um, so Ruben, now it's, he's he's been discharged from neonatal care. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's been home now for about two weeks. Um, so we're very tired. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, he's, it's just so good to have him home. Um, his, his brothers all dote after him. And, yeah. you know, <laughs> I made a joke on Facebook about sort of um, the, the things that fathers should be aware of. And uh, breastfeeding definitely needs to be left down to the mother. <laughs> good, good shout. <laughs> No matter how much you try, mummy's got to do it. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's just so good, so good having yeah. him home. And naturally, getting Reuben home has been the most positive step out of everything. Um, you know, he's tiny; he was like a kilo when he was born. Wow, really? Yeah. So yeah, he was so tiny. And I mean, there's pictures up of me putting up my hand and that essentially covers him wow. um so that, that's how small he was yeah. um now he's weighing i think he's about 2.25 kilos i think it is now so Brilliant. He's, he's putting on the weight he's doing well um kiara's doing great as well mm-hmm. and you know it, it's kind of made me realize how you know how lucky i am um and yeah. actually what an amazing woman of uh of luckily married so, uh, so she is absolutely, without a doubt, the the strongest woman I've ever met. So, uh, fantastic. So blow well, me look, away with, with what she's doing. You, you've got you've got a huge challenge ahead of you with uh, not just doing this event, but prepping for it as well. Whilst yeah. you know being a father to four <laughs> as well and uh, <laughs> young children. So, um, yeah. the kind of big year for you, twenty twenty. How can people follow you? And uh, and support you as well because I mean a big part of this is raising raising kind of much needed funds for for the, the people who helped you uh, and your family. Yeah. Um, so you're on Just Giving um, page, correct? Yes, yeah, so I got a Just Giving page. Um, so it's www.justgiving.com uh, forward slash round the aisle. Okay. Um, if you go on there, um, links up to a YouTube page, um, which actually is going to document all my training um i'll be talking about all sorts of things um obviously the mental health side of things is something that i'm i'm adding as well um because a lot of the a lot of the fathers that go through neonatal sort of really don't know what to expect and yeah i think you see it on the ward as well actually that the longer some some fathers are on the wards the more open about it. and it's uh it's, mm-hmm. it's a strange transition that i didn't really notice until after leaving the ward, I've been back and spoken yeah. to, to people that have seen because you get to know the parents on the ward quite closely, and you're all in the same boat. And this, I mean, Reuben was born at 27 weeks, and mm. babies as young as like 23, 24 weeks on the ward. Yeah. So you, wow. it's, it's crazy. But, um, so I'll, be, I'll be talking about all sorts of things like that. Well, that's hoping, the best place to go to kind of follow you and support you on the journey. Yeah, go on there. I'll, I'll be doing little tour around the um around the neonatal unit and the ward and getting to know the the nurses getting them up on the screen as well so brilliant as much as they'll all probably run away when i'm turned up with the camera <laughs> <laughs> well look you know i'll be following your journey and it's great having you in the on the wagon community as well uh, i'm sure there's many in there who are kind of keen to, to keep on top of how you're getting on with that um and uh, and obviously kind of the fundraising continues as well. And that's the place to go to, to, to support you kind of with, um, with donations as well. But look, yeah, really thanks. Thanks so much for coming on today and persevering with the technology hiccups at the beginning, but, but here we are, we've, we've done it. Uh, it was just it was great seeing your te- head turn into a bubble on the screen. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so like playing around with the special effects. <laughs> well, we made it resilience and grit wins the day again. So thanks again, Nigel, your star and um, best of luck to you and to your, your, your lovely wife and family as well. Thanks a lot, George. Really appreciate it. All right, take care.